went back out of Trinity River Bridge on that follow up. Okay. I just watched the following press conference. Audrey Cunningham, sadly, the 11 year old was found. This next part I'm playing, I'm recording. I've been following it all day. I had recorded a follow-up video to my last one before I knew she was found, but I just learned she was found. It's about 5.15ish p.m. Eastern time. So about four o'clock, we just listened to a press conference. It's pretty strange. It's just very sad and strange. It's It was a little contentious because they talked about whether or not Stephen McDougal, Don Stephen McDougal, who's in jail, who will likely face capital murder charges. The press was asking if he was the one who gave them the location and did he give authorities the notion to lower the river? Did, 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 Stephen, did Don Stephen McDougal lead you to that location on the river where you found her body? Did he tell you where to find her? That was evidence uh, that we was collecting through the cell phone, through the cell phone analysis, as well as through our, as well as through our videos that we were able to collect, and and exactly, and and some of the information that we received from him, we were able to pinpoint and and set. There were several points of interest um, that was turned over to us, so that we were able to develop, and. Thank goodness and thank by the grace of God, one of those places of interest we were able to locate. As I, under, as I understand it. And earlier on the scanner, I had caught wind of an authority going back to that Trinity River Bridge. Yes, ma'am, all the way back out of Trinity River Bridge on that follow up. Okay. But they didn't want to say that Stephen McDougal was the one who led them there. They did. Sheriff Lyons kind of said, yes, he showed us several different locations. I think they just don't want to admit that Stephen McDougal gave them any help at all, of course, because they don't want him, I don't know, maybe copying some sort of plea or getting a lesser charge, which I don't blame them. That that area is one of the first areas of our concern, points of interest when we started our search on Friday, well midday Friday, and again that's going to be developed from some of the evidence, and and then yes there was some points uh, where he did give information, because there were several places that he said that he had went. So it wasn't, a, it wasn't a location where he said he took her, but that was a, a incidence where he said these were locations where he had gone. So there, there are semantics going on here. Some of the stuff we heard that I didn't want to mention, which I can mention now because they brought it up in the press conference, was Audrey weighted down with anything. Now, if you guys are on the Facebook groups, if you're on Reddit, you saw that person on Reddit who had been posting all these things previously saying locals already knew this, locals already knew that Audrey was likely gone. Stephen McDougal had allegedly, this is what the rumor mill was saying, had allegedly confessed that he had weighted her down with something. So now in this presser, they're hearing that McDougal had given authorities the tip of lowering the water level in order to find her. Without this evidence that you talk about, would you have been able to find her where you found her? Without the evidence that you just described? Yes. You would have found her there? We would have found her not through not through him, but we would have found it through the evidence that we collected from the analysis from phones and videos would have, yes. Was she visible to the, to the naked no. eye? You, were, you, you used a sonar, you used a sonar boat Texas Equus Search was out with their sonar boat scanning the, the bottom of the of the river for for her body. They are the ones that discovered the body. Is that correct? Um, no. The image. I, they, I, I, I'm not going to say who exactly or what agency uh, discovered her, her her body today. I will say this that. Due to the lowering, we were able to contact TRA, Trinity River Authority. They slowed down the, the outflow from the uh, the reservoir and it allowed the water to go down and, and her body was discovered uh, there in the water. Um, but I'm not going to say whether it was Harris County or Montgomery County or EquiSearch. It was a conglomeration of a lot of love and law enforcement networking together that sources, helped discover her. Sources have told us though that Stephen McDougall was the one that told you to lower the river, lower the level of the river. We've been told that he actually told you to lower the water 
on the river. Is that true? We talked to TRA on several occasions uh, about lowering it. When they got to the point or they felt they were safe to lower the start lowering the river, we um, we were able to get them to do so. Whether or not Mr. McDougal gave us information on lowering the river or not to be able to locate her, that's information that we do not want to release at this time. And again, Trinity River Bridge at 59 comes up. That's the same location we've been talking about before where Miguel captured that video of them bringing McDougal out there and pointing towards something. So I think there's a lot of pushback on the word confession, whether he actually confessed or not. Sheriff Lyons is saying they used a lot of other information and not just what McDougal told them. It's very sad and it's very weird the way this is playing out. But my condolences so much to everyone who loved this little girl. Ugh, this case. It's just something about this case that hit different, hit harder. And I can't imagine those who loved her. So watch what I have coming up. I don't know how much I'll include of what I've already recorded prior to me knowing that Trinity was found. Talking about all the dispatch alerts drama and everything that was called a rumor, everything that was called gossip and... It's just sad. Watch all this coming up. Watch the new updates from the new presser. And we'll see when McDougal gets these more serious charges and what is going on with whether he told them stuff or not. How much info he gave them or not. Got one more question. One more question. Is there any evidence that the... Yep, he, he did advise that was one of the locations that he had gone. Not that he was saying that she was there or any other location, but we know that he went there as well. Now I'm asking myself, did he really confess or not? What is all this confession drama? Either he told police, I guess Sheriff Lyons is saying he took us to different places, but he did not admit explicitly to putting Audrey in a specific place. But if he told them to lower the water, that's, I don't know. But Sheriff Lyons says they also got information from other people to lower the water. So watch whatever I have coming up and I just pray. Thank God Audrey is with Jesus. She's away from all this worldly hell. Thank you. Tell them what happened. Where is she? They need to know. Family needs to know. Okay, I stand corrected. I'm sorry. Don Stephen McDougal has not confessed to the murder of Audrey Cunningham. There's rumors flying about that McDougal has confessed. Would you address that rumor? Yeah, McDougal, uh, McDougal has not confessed. Um, he has been talking with some of the investigators, but at this point in time, he has not confessed. But according to at least one of his victims, he needs to give her family some answers and put her loved ones out of their unknowing state. Just the sheer look of him. I know I hate to judge a book by its cover, but you know, that's one book somebody should have judged. We're going to talk about all of it. We're going to talk about McDougal's former victims. We're going to talk about that dispatch alert drama, which set off a lot of people and left them wondering about Audrey. We'll talk about the fact that today, Tuesday, February, February 20th, as I film this, Audrey has still not been found. We'll talk about the shower, video drama, and so much more, where law enforcement is honing in on the tracks of Stephen McDougal. Among the people who think McDougal should just confess already and tell us what happened to Audrey, what that monster likely did, is a man named Alec Bryan III. Alec talked about when McDougal went off on him and flipped on him. He got drunk one night, we threw him out of the house, and he come back with a knife and slashed tires and tried to stab me with a knife, and I had to run him off with a gun. And the cops finally come out with dogs and got him. Ellick told Fox 26 that he was a guy who was hanging out with McDougal. McDougal got all drunk, and so Ellick kicked him out. And instead of just leaving, apparently McDougal came back with a knife, started slashing tires, and even tried to stab Ellick. It was terrifying, he said. Terrifying. You know, it really was. I mean, he's, like I said, he seemed like a nice guy, but then he's got this whole other side to him that no one seemed to know about until now. But Alec 
thank God, is a grown man who can protect himself and was able to pull out the guns and chase him off. And the cops eventually sent the dogs after McDougal during that 2010 incident and hemmed him up. One of the most horrible, worst things somebody can do is lose a child. Because I lost my daughter when she was seven to cancer. So I know how it is. And this right here is even worse because there's no closure. That's how McDougal caught his 2010 charge for aggravated assault. And he has a rap sheet so long, people seem to still be finding incidents. And McDougal would confess to a more disturbing incident two years earlier in 2008. Stephen McDougal has a laundry list of criminal charges, including enticing a child back in 2008, where he pled guilty. A grand jury indictment obtained by KPRC shows he attempted to engage in sexual conduct with a girl under 17 when he got in bed with her and pulled her pajama bottoms and panties down. Despite that, McDougal is not required to register as a sex offender. So KPRC found a grand jury indictment where McDougal confessed to getting in bed with a child under the age of 17 and attempting to take off her pajama pants and underwear. Now, in spite of all those disturbing details, McDougal did not have to register as a sex offender, which is shocking. And no wonder there are change.org petitions going around trying to change the laws. It's scary to think what Audrey's image of McDougal must have been. Did he flip out on her? Did he do something to her? Did she threaten to tell? Was her dad on the way home? Did she threaten to tell her mom? Is this what happened when Audrey Cunningham went missing Thursday, February 15th in the morning? Why didn't McDougal take Audrey to the bus stop as he was wont to do at some time? Either she walked, as I understand it, or she would get a ride from this guy to the bus stop. He was he was uh, was probably taking her to the dropping off at the bus stop. And we do feel at this point that he was the last person who seen uh, Audrey. Did he do that regularly? Did he take her to the bus stop every day? Was that something that he routinely did? There has been information found that there were some occasions that he, he did take, drop her off at the bus stop or even take her to school if she missed the bus. So what happened? McDougal did admit he left the home with Audrey that morning. Perhaps they had ring camera to back it up. One person found an image of that house. It looks like it may have had a ring camera. So maybe McDougal couldn't lie about that. Maybe, and this is just conjecture, maybe he was caught on video leaving the home with Audrey. But from there, where he went is a question. There are different Facebook posts of people who claim, yes, he drove by the bus stop. I don't know whether Audrey was with him or not. Of course, we know Audrey did not get on that bus. And yesterday's presser, Sheriff Lyons said, don't you just love him? He said Audrey was last seen approximately around 645 or that's when they can confirm her last sighting or so, but he did not say how they could confirm that sighting. Can you please make sure I understand properly? So, so she didn't go missing at 4.7 a.m. She didn't go missing. No. She, she did go missing at no. 4.7 a.m. No, let me take it. Six. 645 is the is the is when we felt like she went missing. So what happened? Did McDougal indeed have Audrey in the car or in his Chevrolet, that SUV at 6:45 a.m. And where did it go from there? Did Audrey threaten to say something? We know there was a planned meetup allegedly that day after school, I believe, according to those Facebook messages we read before, between Cassie Matthews, Audrey's mom, and McDougal. He was planning to allegedly, according to him, it might have been a whole setup. He was planning to sneak Audrey over to some fishing dock or wherever on the lake to meet up with her mom, Cassie, who hadn't seen her in I don't know when because she does not have custody. Was McDougal afraid that Audrey would spill the beans about something to her mom and he decided to eliminate the threat? Well, it seems like he's leading police on a wild goose chase, so let's talk about all of that and let's hope and pray Audrey can be found. Her mother is speaking out on Facebook. But Audrey's dad, Joshua Cunningham, his nickname is Lucky, he's been interestingly quiet. 
All these details come into play. They are upsetting. It is troubling to know that McDougal did not really confess. Part of me was really hoping he would have just to at least give some kind of closure and not have people thinking a million wild things. Some people think he disposed of Audrey in the lake, but who knows with his troubling past with these enticing a child charges, which I guess he pleaded down to, and maybe that's why he pleaded guilty if I'm under understanding it correctly. We know it's in his history to be inappropriate with children. So we're going to talk about Audrey's whole environment too. That tattoo video versus another more controversial shower video and all of that. And the new details that police have given us. They're looking for video along that farm to market road 3126 in Livingston, Texas, en route to Tigerville Park, somewhere down there. They're honing it in. They're honing in the time frame and they need more evidence. The videos submitted to investigators by the community have been very helpful. We're looking for and asking the public's help for additional video on FM 3126 that shows the highway. This video would have been on Thursday, February 15th between 6.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. So will they get more videos? Let's hope so. And will they find something to stick some serious charges on this McDougal guy so he will never walk if he is indeed guilty? McDougal wasn't done with hurting people though in 2010. There are more charges in 2019 where court records say McDougal hit some guy in the back of the head with a pipe. I read that woman's testimony. It's somewhere in the Facebook groups. I was trying to find that screenshot, but she described it was her allegedly her baby's father. She was in the car with McDougal and he seems like he has this history, this MO, this modus operandi of tricking people according to the testimonies we see here, which is making people wonder, did he give Audrey away in exchange for substances to some kind of ring? Should people be, you know, searching for her more broadly? What did he do? Did he involve another party? We know he was selling stuff like crazy or at least trying to, was attempting to sell stuff on Facebook in and around the time of this crime, according to more screenshots that people have gotten. And he seems to always want to hook up with the ladies, too, in exchange for giving away his truck or letting them watch him or vice versa or something. It's pretty gross when you think about it and couple it with all of these photos, disturbing photos of McDougal. But back to that woman who claims that McDougal hit her baby daddy on the head with a pipe she described from what I've read and I've read so much on this case in the past few days she described McDougal allegedly leading her off somewhere on some property or something and he said oh can I borrow your phone can I use your phone you know just like this family who's trying to help him allegedly the Cunningham family trying to be nice letting him stay on their property in the trailer not knowing what a bad guy he was reportedly well this woman she lent McDougal her phone you know she's right there with her fiance baby daddy whoever he is here she lent him her phone but then he had control of her phone and that's when she claims that either she got out of the car or her fiance got out of the car McDougal started attacking her fiance with a pipe she was able to somehow summon help. She was able to get her phone back, call for help, 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 help. He's attacking my uh, fiance. McDougal, of course, didn't want her calling for help. This is her story on Facebook. And when McDougal saw the cops were on the way or knew they were on the way, that's when allegedly he took off into the woods. She was left there with her man and he was bleeding. And thankfully he didn't die. So I believe those are the details of the 2019 case. So now that we are here 2024 let's kind of go over the february 15th 2024 timeline to where we are today so let's go over the past five days of drama and what's been happening and, and what we know now. So Gage Golding is a reporter with KPRC2 and Gage was able to interview an Exxon gas station store clerk who saw McDougal that pivotal day and apparently he was without Audrey as I understand it. So this is the Exxon gas station in Cold Spring, Texas and I did a little Google Maps and I see it's about 15 miles away from where McDougal stayed in a camper on the property with the Cunningham family. You know locals are claiming that McDougal 
left home with Audrey and whatever time he rode past that bus stop, I don't know. Let's say six-ish, let's go with the cops saying 645, maybe there was an eyewitness, maybe there was video evidence. Let's say 645 a.m. that morning is when McDougal was last spotted or at least Audrey was last spotted alive. The scuttlebutt on Facebook is saying McDougal did not return home or to the property or wherever until 11 a.m. That's a long timeline of where he may have taken her in that time period or what he may have done with her. But this clerk at this Exxon gas station, she saw McDougal at her gas station that same morning after Audrey disappeared. She remembers what she calls his ugly face. He's very distinctive. You can't forget him. And the clerk did end up reporting it to police and they got their lickety split to that Exxon gas station within 15 minutes. Because as soon as the clerk saw that Amber alert, Thank God for Amber Alerts and she saw online and social media, this is the guy related to this case. She let cops know. So social media helped by getting Stephen McDougal's face out there even before he was arrested. And God bless that woman, whoever she was, Patricia Joe, who, you know, had the chutzpah to follow McDougal around when the cops were with him and following him and he was getting gas and all that stuff. So all the more video evidence helps. So this Exxon clerk told the news, I can't remember what he bought. It might have been some change for gas or maybe a couple of beers. Was he drinking that early in the morning after he did what he did? She said, I didn't know I was supposed to remember and I do know he was here because he's so ugly. It's a face you don't forget. Indeed, and it's not really about the physical. It's about the heart, the ugly heart that exudes outward. So as soon as she saw McDougal's face on social media on Friday, she called police. They made it to that Exxon gas station within 15 minutes and got that surveillance video footage. We'll probably end up seeing all of this at some point in time. So yes, cops in the presser yesterday, we had that presser yesterday, Monday, February 19th, where we learned a lot more, but we were still left with a lot of questions. That's when we learned the last time Audrey was seen was Thursday, February 15th, around 6.45 a.m. He even confirmed it. Sheriff Lyons reached over and spoke with a woman and she said 6.45 a.m. That's the last time they believe Audrey was seen. So Polk County Sheriff Byron Lyons, God bless him, getting over bronchitis and everything, made it out there. He told the media, 6.45, this is when we feel that she went missing. So we don't know how the cops confirmed that time, but we trust them, they confirmed it, maybe there's video evidence. As they get more and more video evidence, they can tighten up that timeline and track McDougal's steps and hopefully it will lead them to Audrey because it feels like he's just leading them on a wild goose chase, you know. Here, here, Trinity Bridge, there, there. Lieutenant Craig Cummings with the Texas Department of Public Safety, he opened the presser and he said, the videos submitted to investigators by the community have been very helpful. We're looking for and asking the public's help for additional video on FM 3126 that shows the highway. This video would have been on Thursday, February 15th between 6.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. So again, that's FM 3126 on Thursday, February 15th, between 6.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. that shows the highway. So we can kind of see along that line, I see FM 3126, and he says that shows the highway. So I'm assuming he means that FM Road is the highway all the way up to, they're going to talk about the scenic area, maybe around the scenic loop around Tigerville Park as well. Hopefully someone has some dash cam footage or an eyewitness or anyone who's along that road that can help them out. Now, Audrey Cunningham's family friend did speak before, or during, or after the prayer vigil. This man said, this is a tragic incident. Indeed, even though we don't know what happened. All he had to say was, I realize that everybody's talking a bunch of stuff on Facebook. I'm going to ask that if you don't know anything, don't say anything. This is a tragic incident. I realize that everybody's talking a bunch of stuff on per, on Facebook and stuff like that. I'm going to ask that if you don't know anything, mm. don't say anything. Tell them. All you're doing is hurting the family. That's right. That makes no sense. You don't, don't know what they're going through. You don't know the circumstances. I do know Audrey is loved. I know Audrey is cared for. 
And I know Audrey lo loved the, her grandmother, her father, her brother, and family. Well, although this family friend of the missing 11-year-old Audrey said that the little girl was well taken care of and he admonished Facebook users for speaking out, Facebook users are continuing to speak out. They're claiming Audrey must not have been that well taken care of and they're talking about this inappropriate video of Audrey in the shower that was posted on the social media site by her family. So I just want to touch on the shower video controversy a little bit since I mentioned it in my previous video. By now we know Stephen McDougall was the roommate of Joshua Cunningham. Joshua Cunningham is Audrey's dad. He also goes by the nickname Lucky. So I haven't said much about him. I can imagine how distraught he must be. I know a lot of folks online are jumping on the dad, jumping on the mom. I'm trying to reserve judgment. There's one person in custody. That's McDougal. We don't know. They left it open. Who knows who else might end up being in custody? We don't know. But I'm just... I don't want to tear down Audrey's family. But there is a video people are talking about um, that witnesses have seen that reportedly shows Joshua and his brother, who would be Audrey's uncle. Now, to be clear, I have not seen the video, nor have I searched for the video, nor will I publish it if I ever end up seeing it. So I've seen plenty of talk about the video, and I've even seen a screenshot, and it's been redacted, so you can't see little Audrey, thankfully. But... It does reveal that the post was dated October 26, 2015. Audrey was only a three-year-old girl around there at that point. The caption reads, Audrey got into the soap and got it in her eyes and all over her face. So maybe it was meant to be a cute little video. But one woman in a Facebook group, she wrote on Saturday, February 17th, 2024 at 1.09 p.m. Has anyone else seen the video of some man giving her a shower when she was much younger? It's infuriating. Someone said it's disturbing. Someone took a video of a little girl showering and posting it. Yes, besides that, someone else wrote she was crying because soap got in her eyes and they were laughing at her and just spraying water in her face, asking her if she wanted more soap. So she's a little girl and, um, you know, the shower curtain open and like you know you bathe your children you shower your children or whatever and apparently Audrey must have gotten to the soap I haven't seen the video I can only go by witnesses descriptions and they're spraying her maybe trying to get the soap out of her eyes or whatever and she's crying it doesn't sound like it's a good video but the thing is of course she's unclothed a little girl but still you know According to witnesses, the video like flashes down and up. So it's nothing you want to see. I know some people online in the heyday of Facebook or as YouTube has gotten along, you know, people have transitioned their home movies, cute little things they think, naked little, you know, family members running around. It turns into a whole different ball game when you're talking about a young girl in that capacity some people might see it as cute and funny and some people don't you know it could really be you know what i mean cp it could be not a good thing you don't know who's out there watching photos of kids and all that for the wrong reason so it should never basically have been a video it should never have been on facebook and i only bring that up because it's controversial and it kind of gives you an idea of the environment that audrey's in just like the tattoo video i did include that tattoo video in my previous video audrey it appears is giving someone i don't know who some people say it is the suspect i was trying to look at the tattoos to match them up and maybe i could do that even further because i have more uh, photos of his tattoos now of mcdougall's tattoos but i haven't been able to confirm who she was tattooing at first i thought she was tattooing the forearm of the person but then if i looked again i saw i saw like a person's hand so maybe the hand was right here she might have been tattooing a man's thigh again people are arguing about this over facebook i do agree that it's inappropriate it's inappropriate for these circumstances now it's one thing if if it were my child if audrey was my daughter she's an artist i get it some people say 
oh, there's nothing wrong with kids practicing their tattoo artist skills. And that's perfectly fine if, if it's even legal. And you know, some people are saying, well, my daughter is now a 23 year old tattoo artist and I let her practice on me. Yeah, that's one thing if a little a young girl like Audrey is over here if she were my daughter and she's practicing you know artwork on me yeah that's one thing it's a whole different ball game for an 11 year old girl to practice her tattooing on a grown man's thigh if it is the man also who is convicted of harming children in the past so that's a whole nother brouhaha let's get off of that <laughs> It's just, it makes me sad for Audrey. Let's talk about this scanner alert drama. So I'm looking at all these Lake Livingston area wide public safety alerts that went out. I think it went out maybe Friday or Saturday. It's hard to know. It's hard to know exactly when all these alerts started updating on the scanner because you see a whole bunch of different amount of listeners. There were a lot of people listening, a varying amount of people listening when this alert went out. And maybe now that I'm thinking of it, maybe it's because of this alert going out that one time I got on there and I thought they had found Audrey or something because there were like, I think 5,000 people listening. And I thought, oh, something must have happened because the scanner numbers go up, of course, when some big event is going on. So we see a varying amount of these alerts claiming they were from fire search and rescue after killer confessed to the murder of the missing 11 year old girl. Law enforcement fire continues to search for her body on Lake Livingston, but being tight lipped on the radio, mostly using cell phones, according to sources on the scene. That's what someone wrote this unknown person, but someone knows who it is as we'll see next. So at one point when that was written, there were 436 listeners, but there were nearly 5,000 listeners. There were nearly 5,000 listeners at some point later, it says 4.05 PM. So no wonder that alert first went out and everyone must have jumped on the scanner and started getting screenshots of what they thought was real because it's in the alert. It's not something the audio necessarily people caught auditorily, but it was in the written notes field. And you see here by 9.05 PM, Lake Livingston area wide public safety. We know it covers multiple counties in Texas. That's why it sounds so haphazard when you listen to on Broadcastify. It's like you can barely make out what they're saying. There were nearly 6,000 people listening when this was published, that killer allegedly confessed to the murder of the missing 11 year old girl. And what's really confusing is it is an authentic feed. It's not like it's some fake scanner feed. Apparently someone just made some broad assumptions and updated the alert with these horrible words without them being true. Or maybe they assumed since they saw cops taking McDougal to different locations, they must have said, ah, oh, yeah, he confessed. They went the extra step, unfortunately, to alert the scanner. And it just made so many people just freak out. It even has all the different areas covered, San Jacinto, Polk, Trinity, Walker, Madison. And it even has the broadcastify.com link over there. It looks really legit. So this is what happened. It was definitely not this guy, this Polk County scanner guy, because the Polk scanner Facebook group posted this message on February 16th, 2024 at 1.58 PM. We will be suspending our Polk County San Jack scanner feed for the time being. We do not wish to be associated with the spread of unofficial and unconfirmed information. So a man named Nelson Hazan, he literally posted this message. He said, I run the Facebook page and YouTube channel Polk Scanner. I live stream to YouTube my personal scanner. I would like to ask that if anyone hears anything over the scanner, realize that it covers multiple agencies in multiple counties. Yeah, we know that. But this actual alert claimed, you know, Audrey's name in there. So it wasn't like someone overheard something. Oh, that belongs to a different county. No, someone intentionally typed that in there. He wrote, you should not consider it official information regardless of what you hear. I really know that now because who would do that without overhearing some law enforcement say it? And did a member of law enforcement say it? Did a member of law enforcement assume since the Rangers were taking McDougal different places that he confessed? 
Nelson continued, I am not associated with the scanner stream that was making false claims the other day. That is a completely different person. So Nelson knows who it is. He's saying, it's just not me. He wrote, my main thing is feel free to listen, but wait for officials to tell us what is related and what is not. So that completely different person, I wonder who it is. He continued, edit, if you do hear any information over my scanner about her being found, do not share it. Let law enforcement handle that and officially release the information. Let the family, I guess he means have time to be informed. Regardless of what the outcome is, it is not our place to, and then it cuts off. I do understand what he's saying, but the public, especially in cases like this, they are going to be ears glued to the scanner. And the minute you hear something about Audrey, I know it's going to go out wide, but you just hope who's ever passing along information, it's just legitimate information. It was on Saturday, February 17th, 2024, or even earlier perhaps that viewers began noticing and screenshotting all these sad alerts on their scanner apps regarding Audrey. It's a wide variety of screenshots claiming he confessed, claiming cops were tight-lipped on the radio, claiming, you know, they're using cell phones according to sources on the scene. And that's very true. Cops do either switch channels or they switch means of communications when the world starts watching some huge case. Because of course, they don't want to tip off the person who's the suspect. They don't want to tip off the public. They don't want reporters rushing to the scene. Eventually, all those messages changed to simply say abduction. So it's not clear who that person was updating the feed, but I hope in the future, if they update the feed, I hope it's accurate information because people like me, a lot of reporters, everyone relies heavily. I mean, we pay for Broadcastify's premium service. We rely heavily, at least I do, I know, on their section that reads audio feeds with active alerts to find out what's happening in real time locations across the country, oftentimes before the mainstream media, but it's supposed to be information directly from law enforcement. So for example, just the other day, I saw feeds with active working major incidents. There was some hazmat uh, incident reported, some Oklahoma City fire alert that went out. And previous to that, stuff I've posted on Twitter or X, you know, I saw in Mesa County and Grand Junction Police, their fire and EMS feed had talked about there was this major vehicle accident on I-70. It was like a semi. I couldn't find any information about it at first, only on the Broadcastify feeds with alerts. All of these other ones were accurate, and I only found out about it a long time later through mainstream media. So it's sad to see that whomever updated this Livingston feed, you know, with such bad information, with so many people listening. I can't imagine, you know, you have thousands and thousands and thousands of people listening, and then this bad information is placed out there. I mean, people use these to, you know, check for active shooters or check for situations. And with nearly 6,000 people listening to the feed at the time when they're putting in these fake alerts, it's just sad. But at least I know, okay, fine, take everything with a grain of salt because people obviously must jump to conclusions in this case when they saw McDougal at the Trinity River Bridge. I don't know if cops asked them to take down that alert. Either way, the feed went down temporarily and then it came back up. But people started posting on Facebook again. The confession part was 100% on the scanner. I saw it with my own eyes. True or not, I don't know, but it was on the scanner. And someone wrote, those lines can be easily hacked and manipulated. I work at a detention center and we don't even share over the radio many things because of interference, which is, that just sucks that that would happen. And another person wrote, every time I've ever checked it in my area, it was correct. So I don't know who runs it or how it works, but I saw what everyone was talking about. Maybe whoever runs it got ahead of themselves and assumed he confessed because he was out there pointing stuff out to law enforcement. So apparently we got it cleared up from cops yesterday. McDougal did not confess, but he is talking it just sounds like he's playing games. So that was the same day that Miguel Benavides captured a brief video on Saturday, February 17th of cops bringing McDougal, that 42 year old white male to the Trinity Bridge, to the Trinity River Bridge in Livingston, Texas. You can tell he's 
a redhead. He has blue eyes. He's relatively tall, about 220 or something. Miguel's video is very, very brief, but you can make out the bald head, presumably McDougal, standing there with law enforcement. And he's still in custody now, thank God, on those unrelated assault charges. But authorities did confirm, yes, we've been bringing him places. The reporter asked, you said McDougal has taken you some places or you've asked him to point you to several places. Can you explain it again? Sheriff Lyons said, so in speaking with the Rangers, we're just asking him, hey, take us to where any places that you think where you may have been. So he has done that on one occasion. So that's cool, Miguel capture the one occasion so that was the only one occasion thank god miguel was there and miguel was catching hell at first people were doubting him like oh you're lying and that's not him and blah 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 the reporter said to follow up on this question re regarding the location where mcdougal took you and other authorities could you share that location the sheriff said at this time we don't want to share a location that he's taken us to other than to say there are multiple places of interest that we have gone to and have made searches and i'm sure before this day is out we'll be searching other locations so at first he says he only took us one place and then he's kind of saying there's multiple places of interest and he doesn't want to share the location he's taking him to so i'm assuming it's only one time like he's saying here but miguel did publish this video february 17th at 2 39 p.m with the caption they have him out of the police car at the trinity river bridge at 59. No effing way, one woman wrote, and Miguel replied, I just saw him. And then she replied, not good at all. That means he is showing them. He admitted to something. So people were making the kind of same assumptions. Is that him? One person asked, and Miguel said, yes, it's him. We were parked, and right after they got him out, the police made us move. They were like, with the bald head, I screenshot it and blew it up and could see his bald head. And Miguel answered, yes. So we know he was taken there. We don't know exactly why. Miguel was interviewed later, so you can find his full interview on the link below at Grizzly's Hood News. He testified to what he saw and everything. Miguel was saying, yeah, it's like he was there perhaps pointing out over the water. So I wonder if McDougal's just talking out of his butt like, oh, I don't know where I went. I think I stopped and went fishing. You know, there's a lot of talk of water, of where he went after he... He doesn't even say he dropped Audrey off at the bus stop. I don't think he says anything about that. So whatever he's telling them and not really telling them about his movements that day, maybe he's making up something like, oh yeah, maybe I was here at Trinity River Bridge or over there somewhere. I think I was in here. Maybe I was doing whatever. But we know cops were late to the presser that day. They had McDougal in a different location. They had the media away. Thank God Miguel was where he was. So he captured, you know, McDougal. He said he was wearing jail stripes, shorts, and boots. We can't see all that. Miguel said he couldn't see what he was doing. You know, they had a vehicle blocking Miguel's view, asking him to leave. But Miguel said they were there, down there for less than five minutes. And he did, Miguel did see McDougal pointing towards something, perhaps towards the water. But when Miguel first got there, all he saw was some sort of flat bottom boat in the water, as if the search team was searching the water in that area. And that's when the DPS officer asked Miguel to leave because they had pulled up with McDougal. So the big question we're left with is, will Audrey be found? Will McDougal be charged with something, something stronger than these previous charges? So we know the main person of interest right now, McDougal, 42 year old, was arrested on those unrelated aggravated assault charges. And they still want information about the travel, location, the videos that capture that 2003 Chevrolet Suburban. So authorities do have control of that vehicle. I think that's confusing people. They just want more videos of McDougal's movement in that vehicle, especially the critical morning when Audrey went missing. Some people still, I think it's just the way it was worded when it's like cops are seeking information about this Chevrolet or whatever, or Chevrolet Suburban or whatever, people are assuming, oh, they need the Chevy, they don't have control of the vehicle. No, they have it, thankfully. Hopefully they've gotten a lot of evidence out of it. They just want videos of its movements. Lieutenant Cummings did say Thursday, February 15th, about 
5.30 is when Audrey was reported missing. However, if we listen to this dispatch audio released on a YouTube channel from when Audrey's grandmother reportedly called police, it says the call was made at 1700. So that's 5 p.m. on February 15th. Yeah, around to one Lakeside Drive. One Lakeside Drive is going to be for a missing person. Caller states her 11-year-old granddaughter was dropped off at the bus at about 7 a.m. this morning and never made it on the bus and has not been seen since. Yeah. 826. Female is about approximately 4 foot 11, 86 pounds, blonde hair, long, blonde, long hair, blue eyes, last seen wearing a dark color jacket. Yeah, boy. Hey, three, seven, ten, eight. Yeah, boy. Good. Public service, you, uh, her address and his phone number. Hey, what time does this call? 1700. A missing juvenile. Um, called in from the county. They want us to check that address and see if she's there. It's supposed to be the mom's address. Mom does not have custody of her. Has never had custody of her. And uh, has made threats recently to kidnap her. Okay, if you text me, uh, if you have the mom's information, so I can, uh, just on your And that's clear, sir. I'll send you folks over there. There's a spiel. There's already a story going on in this call. Now, I don't know what the grandmother was told. You know, I heard she was very upset at the vigil and crying. But it says, you know, police were told Audrey's mother had made threats to kidnap her and she's never had custody of the child. So that was the narrative being given apparently on the 911 call. You know, the grandmother, maybe she's being told, oh, Cassie wants to kidnap Audrey again. And some people are getting on Facebook saying, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Cassie tried to kidnap Audrey when she was uh, a four-year-old. She made her run for it. And some people are like, well, I don't blame her to get her out of that environment. And on Cassie's behalf, she's going off on Facebook. Facebook too. You know, we covered those previous screenshots, Facebook messages between Cassie and McDougal, where it was sounding to me like McDougal was trying to set Cassie up for something for some reason. But Cassie is saying, look, I like to address all the assumptions being passed around here recently. If you can provide me a record that states I failed a drug test for court in the custody battle of Audrey, then and only then can you accurately state I was on drugs, chose drugs over my child, did drugs around my child. Just know that can't be done because it is nothing other than a rumor spread by the same father that put her in the situation to begin with. So they're like the Hatfields and the McCoys. You just see all this battle back and forth. You hear from different sides. Cassie is claiming because there was money on her father's, on Audrey's father's side, they had the money to battle the courts or buy the courts or whatever and take Audrey from her. And other people are, you know, lobbing disparaging remarks against Cassie. But Cassie said, now until then, you all look like nothing other than a bunch of silly people who chose to speak on a subject they are obviously uneducated in. The professionals you look to to solve this case know the facts and the reasons behind those messages I chose to post myself to be nothing other than crystal clear and honest about everything because I have nothing to hide. Check my podcast link below if you want to see video before this one, not previous, but before that. This was before McDougal was arrested. I remember Friday, I sat down and I was reading all those Facebook message exchange, got the video up around midnight or whatever, and then I saw, oh, he's been arrested. Cassie said, just know that your BS doesn't phase me one bit because the most important and only important thing to me is finding my daughter. I could give an F less what everyone else thinks. What you think and your judgment isn't giving me my daughter back. Use more energy, productivity to try and help instead of hurt. That's, I don't know, just an idea because obviously by now, if your speculation was true, I'd be sitting in the same boat as the man who has taken my baby from the family that loves her. So she's saying, look, if all this crap you guys are talking about me is true, I'd be in the same boat as McDougal up in that jail. I find it so fascinating she used the word boat. Like, boat, water, in this case, ugh. Grow the F up. This is beyond childish at this point. Not everything is about slandering, bullying people you don't even know for the sake of your entertainment. And Cassie, I think she has been very forthcoming and outright. She wrote, I've answered all questions needed to be answered to the professional professionals needed to answer them. I've taken a polygraph test three times and I'm not sitting in the same boat as that monster. So even if it's not understood, it obviously 
must not be what everyone thinks. In the meantime, I'm very grateful McDougal is sitting in a jail behind bars somewhere. It seems like he should have been there all along for catching this charge on the aggravated assault, which he kind of, I guess, slipped up on. He was trying to, of course, detectives are pressing him over Audrey information. He wasn't being forthright about that. He made statements about this assault charge, and that's how they were able to get enough probable cause to hold him on that. Because McDougal, while he was still out, he seemed active on Facebook here answering questions, you know, wasn't me, I didn't do it. He had written, nope, I was right there when he called and said she didn't go to school. I have absolutely nothing to hide. Everything I did yesterday was checked and checked again and it was correct. So I'm assuming this must have been posted on Friday before they locked him up. I don't know what he means nope i was right there when he called because according to the dispatch maybe he's talking about when lucky or joshua found out that audrey didn't go to school that day according to screenshots i've seen from cassie if i'm not mistaken if she's not mistaken she says the school alerted audrey's father at 1 p.m that she wasn't there they said something about the bus barn audrey 1 p.m that day did not get on the bus so cassie was questioning why did it take so long for audrey to be reported missing so indeed did joshua actually find out at 1 p.m or was it just like a voicemail he didn't check until later all these things matter and i'm sure cops are digging all into it and lastly i just want to talk about good group info that's being moved to private facebook circles because of the way people are reacting someone posted i want it to take a moment to say that the Audrey groups are missing out on a lot of pertinent info regarding law enforcement's daily activities and findings because of the a-hole reply comments. There's much that could be shared, but who wants to be crucified over a Facebook group post? I know, I don't blame her. As soon as Miguel posted his video of McDougal down there at Trinity River Bridge, it was so good. I mean, he got great feedback, but some people are just like, no, you're lying. He couldn't be down there. If he was there, another reporter would be there. I mean, just the first instinct of some people is just, ah! <laughs> but this woman wrote, for example, a homeowner lives approximately seven miles from grandma's home. And this homeowner was visited by FBI yesterday. So I don't know what yesterday was, because I don't know what date this was posted. But the homeowner was asked to show video surveillance from Thursday because Steven's vehicle was seen on video in that neighborhood Thursday morning at approximately 7.30. So I wonder where this is. I don't know if it's like further north. Is this the tip that they referenced yesterday in the press conference? The homeowner provided details of the surrounding area. The, the homeowner was mocked by members even after providing photos of the FBI agent outside his home. I wish I could have seen them. The post was deleted and now that thread of information that the neighbors were contributing to is not available to you. Many of us have connected privately to avoid the negativity within the groups. Yeah. Kindness matters. If you want info that another member has to share, be a welcoming human being. Perhaps take a breath before commenting and think of the beautiful girl who has brought us together, Audrey. It's so true. Some people are, people do have information to share. We're all coming together people want to collectively share info try to vet what's true what's not true you know some of it's going to pan out some of it's going to be semi-true some of it's going to be assumptions but it is sad when folks true locals are there sharing information and they are so attacked i mean it's sad to me the way chronicles of olivia was attacked when she said the backpack and a shoe has been found and that's before we knew anything people were you know her comments were on fire then cops came out and they did confirm yes a backpack pack we believe belongs to Audrey was found and they have not confirmed whether a shoe or not has been found so we don't know that to be true yet but they did say other items were found maybe eventually we will learn that a shoe was found but to me it's sad the way people are just attacked for no reason or everyone's accused of clout chasing everyone down there even boots on the ground or you know people trying to cover it from YouTube or other places it's uh, don't get me started. Let's talk about Sheriff Lyon's wonderful words about Audrey. He said, yes, McDougal. He's talking about McDougal. He may have been the last person with her. And yes, she is missing at this time. But we want to make for sure that whatever evidence that we collected and placed on an affidavit today will hold up in court later. Because I think people are saying, wait a minute. If you know McDougal was the last person with Audrey and you know she's still missing five days later, I think they were inferring 
they may have even asked a chart to hear the crowd questions. Why haven't you, you know, charged him with something stronger? The Sheriff Lyon says it does us no good to prematurely charge him now and it gets thrown out of court because we were moving too fast. So please understand this as we move carefully through this because Audrey deserves this. She deserves us taking our time. And he talked about, you know, Audrey having a voice. So, yeah. It's a tough case, this beautiful little girl, you know. We wish she just had better surroundings. And this is me not throwing salt in the wounds. This is not me criticizing anyone because I don't know the full story. I mean, I think I just read somewhere, Aaron, I think it's Aaron Paskett, this woman who must have really was like a, a mom to Audrey. If I understand correctly, um, the way Audrey is talking about who to send that tattoo video to, and that's what it sounds like she says, not casket, but Paskett, from what I'm reading, if this person's correct, Aaron was like this mom, really like a mom to Audrey. So we don't know who all really loved her and really helped take care of her. I just wish she could have been in a permanently safe environment away from any horrible creatures. But okay, again, as we know, McDougal's vehicle, dark blue Chevrolet Suburban, it's in police custody. That's confusing some outlets. And the videos that have come out or have been given to police directly or whatever have been very helpful. So check again the cameras anytime between Thursday, 5.30 a.m. to 8 a.m., FM 3126 and beyond. We've got even more, of course, more details beyond that now just anything that helps even if it's outside of these hours that the cops have specified but you know it might be mcdougall's vehicle just give it to the cops you find stuff just give it to the cops so law enforcement continues searching their efforts there's an announced increased reward of 10 grand for info leading to the whereabouts of audrey and McDougal's playing games. He's not fully cooperating with investigators, but, you know, maybe he's playing. He won't even admit if Audrey made it to the bus stop or not. So I can imagine this interrogation. You'll probably see it someday. We'll go over it in detail about how he's probably playing around. But those were the main points. You know, somewhere along that scenic loop, maybe the scenic loop cabins, Tigerville Park. We don't know exactly. We don't. They don't want to give us too many details but he could have taken her somewhere in there so they just kind of detailed yeah the family does have a relationship with mcdougall you know he was living in a camper behind the residence where audrey lived with her father you know according to facebook stuff they felt sorry for him they didn't know all these old charges he had which could be true you know there are charges all over different counties but i just hate that ugh, a man like that he probably came with a reputation and it's nice to help someone, but I hate that he came from the camper and was given so much access to Audrey. Because like people say, if it was him getting the tattoo or whatever, yeah, on the outside, that might not be a bad thing. A girl, for example, if it were her mom, giving her mom or dad a tattoo and she's an artist and all that, but it's a totally different thing if it's a person who's trying to groom her, you know? Like the other night on the Pascal show when he talked about, oh, yeah, you know, it's like a move of maybe that family saying, oh, yeah, I trust 